If you want to know how to file your I-130A together with your I-130, this is the video for you. So let's dive in and let the journey begin. Hello everyone, good day. My name is Emery and welcome to Powerful Couple Journey where we show you our random activities for today's video. This is going to be a part two series of our submission of forms to the USCIS regarding our J-1 visa processing through do-it-yourself. With this, you are going to look at the expiration date, which I'm going to be showing you here. It's really important to see if the forms you're submitting is expired or not because this will determine if they will accept your form submitted to the USCIS or they're going to return it to you through mail. With the I-130, you can have two options, do it online or you can file through paper or by mail. As far as I can remember, I did the form I-130A through mail because it was back in 2021. To start this form, you have to use a black ink and you have to see start here. That is if you're going to do it through paper. But if you're going to do it through mail, it's still the same process and you just have to use your computer which is easier for you to do and submit this form and this is for free so make sure you submit your I-130 together with your I-130A. Part 1, this is where I have highlighted and where your information that you're going to be putting because this is confidential and this is exactly your information. If the portion that you have there is not applicable to you, put an A. Never leave anything blank. I used to be a J1 teacher from the Philippines. That's why I put my country Philippines over here. And this is for our first page. Part 2 will be information about you. Make sure to answer the highlighted portion and put an A for the things that is not applicable to you or the blanks and put an A for the blanks that is not applicable to you. Page 3 will be part 2, 3, and 4. Put the information that they have and again, never leave blank. Put N slash A if it's not applicable to you. Since we are our spouse beneficiary, always remember to put your signature and the date that you fill out this form. It is very important because what I have seen from other groups through Facebook group, they forgot to put their signature. That's why the papers were returned to them. And you do not want to do that because it will eat up your time. It's very important to submit it properly in your first time. Page 4 will be part 5 and 6. Most likely you're going to put NA if this is not applicable to you. And I'm going to put it here. That way you see that a lot of it you're going to put NA. Not unless you have other information like have an interpreter, then you have to put their name and information. Part 6 will be another information. If you have an immigration lawyer, most likely they're going to help you with this. But if you are compelled to do it yourself, then this is going to be how it looks like on your paper. With my husband and I, we got married. Both are single prior to our marriage. So it's going to be super easy. No strings attached. No kids. So everything is simple and straightforward. Page 6 will be the part 7. And these are additional information if you wanted to put something there. But just like what we have, I just put NA because again, I don't need that space right there. But make sure it's blank. That way the USCIS officer know that that is not applicable to you. So that's it for the Form I-130. If you wanted to submit it online, go to USCIS.gov. It's free. If you wanted to print it, then go to that website again and it will be printed out and sent with your evidences. That way, it's better to overwhelm the immigration officer for your evidences. 
and showing them your real relationship and marriage with your spouse rather than them saying that you have insufficient evidences. Thank you so much for watching. Please look at more related videos with Powerful Couple Journey and I also created the J1 Waiver Helping Hands group where we share our ideas on how to get our J1 Waiver whether you have an immigration lawyer or you are compelled to do it yourself just like what we did. I also have my website which i created showing you my statement of reasons and other forms that we use that is very helpful if you wanted to do it yourself and giving you insights on how to do the j1 waiver process if you are subject to the 212e rule home residency requirement thank you so much and see you in my next video god bless everyone